Hello, and welcome to the ongoing history of beer. I am your new host to this new segment, Tiffany, and I welcome you to my fake living room where we're gonna and drink beer and talk about beer and all the wonderful things that go along with it. So to start off the first show today, I have Stacy, which some of you might recognize from several entities um, around Brantford at this point, yeah. but I thought you would be a fantastic first guest on the show because you're easy to talk to, you make wonderful goodies that go well with beer, and you're just uh, a delight. So, oh, so uh, welcome to the show. Thanks. I'm excited to be in your yeah. fake basement. Yeah, my fake basement. That's it. I feel like it's. I want to give this more of a um, more of a Wayne's World, yes. a Wayne's World vibe. So <laughs> I might start wearing. Tease my hair a little. More yeah, maybe. and I might start yeah. wearing. Uh, uh, Aerosmith shirts yeah. and in my glasses I do have a costume <laughs> uh, from Halloween many years ago of oh Wayne's World. Oh my goodness, your Halloween stuff. Yeah, yeah. So I thought you would be an excellent guest to bring in. I know uh, last week on the Think Millennial show um, I talked a little bit about fall flavors and how things were starting to change with the season yes, out there. my favorite season. <laughs> yes, too. yes, that's another thing. Yeah. I brought these, uh, the, yes, don't worry, they're not poison that we're drinking yeah. today, but I thought I would bring some fall glassware. If, if it's a Bud Light or a Molson Canadian, yeah. it's poison. <laughs> no, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Exactly. I've got the, the good stuff to go yeah. in there. Um, but yeah, I thought we could invite you in and sort of um, bring in some, some cupcakes or talk a little bit about yeah. what's going on in the store as, fall as, as far as yeah. seasons changing and fall flavors coming in oh. and then match up some beers too with whatever it is you brought. Perfect. Well, mm. one of the things that's going to be coming up in the shop is going to be some events. We do cupcake and beer pairing and yes. we're also going to do with Tiffany um, cup or sorry, beer and donut, gourmet donut pairing. So really excited. We're just firming up some dates. but. This is my favorite time of year to do any kind of pairings because, you know, summer flavors are lovely, but they're a little on the lighter side. You know, they're not as intense to pair with. Mm -hmm. um, the flavor profiles aren't as strong. So when you get into fall and winter flavors, like you just think of all those spicy notes and, you know, even the, the tangerines and the oranges, the citrus, like it, it's just, it makes me... Pardon me, I might yeah. be drooling while I'm talking. <laughs> you know, it just is, it, it's exciting and there's just more that you can put together because the, the flavors aren't going to compete with one another. Right, right? They're right. going to complement one another. I so. like the way you bring that up. And yeah. citrus is still much a fall flavor as oh. it is a summer. Like I was yeah. thinking about that going into there because well, you're getting more of the the rind a little bit and you're still putting yeah. that in your ciders and oh well tangerine you know like mm -hmm. clementine you ah. know like just beautiful for uh fall and winter flavors and apple you know mm -hmm. that beautiful kind of crisp apple flavor it's tart you know so there's and then there's just more traditional flavors even with you know pineapple pineapple goes all year round it can be kind of tropical yes. you know like pina colada kind of feel but then you know you think fall baking like a nice gooey brown sugary pineapple upside down cake oh, right I love it. I you love know it. so some flavors will um, go I into different seasons so. yeah yeah and then yeah. getting into the fall spices as well oh. which I find that almost defines a fall beer at time or totally. our, our pumpkin beers that are hitting the shelves you're yeah. usually getting that clove and that nutmeg and a little bit of cinnamon yeah. flavor in there too and so. cinnamon goes with everything yeah. yeah I bought today this is off topic because it's not um, cupcakes but it's my other favorite no. thing oh. cheese I bought a pumpkin spice cheese today no. at Farm Boy. It, okay I'm <laughs> beelining it to Farm Boy yes. as soon as we stop so yeah anything uh, pumpkin it tastes again I find it's just those spices that kind of I guess give you that, that yeah. pumpkin spice but I thought yeah. it was really really tasty cheese so. well and you know how beautiful is that you can do a aged cheddar any time of the year right yeah but, you know this time of year you you want to play on what is seasonal mm -hmm. so how beautiful would that be to tell your guests that you have pumpkin spice cheese <laughs> right so with and they had the samples out so I think yeah. I had like three or four before I was a nice like, oh, cranberry I I cracker <gasps> no, totally like, wow. I like it. Yeah, we need like to have it. a party. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to, I'm curious before we get into some of these yeah. flavors about um, your donuts as well, because generally donuts are fried, but you're doing a different style of donut. Can we you just are. explain from my curiosity well, yep. how you are doing this? Well, we wanted to tap into, you know, the trendy donut market, but, mm -hmm. you know, we didn't have, we don't have deep fryers in our uh, location. And, you know, again, I don't want to compete with, people who already have that niche in our area so right. what can I do differently so we are doing a baked donut which is actually you know in a 
it's a real way of doing a donut. It's just more people are used to the, the fried donuts at Tim Hortons and that yeah. uh, nowadays. So ours are, everything of course is baked from scratch at the shop, but it's a sour cream base. So oh sour my. cream just makes things very moist. <laughs> it just elevates the flavor again. Yeah. And you know, so we do anything from a chocolate, a vanilla, a lemon, um, our cinnamon sugar donuts are just that good old fashioned cakey donut that you want to dunk in a coffee or a chai tea. Fantastic. So, like a like cake that. texture? It has a cakier too. texture. Okay. It's different than a cupcake because yeah. a lot of people that buy those aren't cake eaters and they do find a difference. And mm -hmm. of course, you know, we do some with more traditional toppings, some with, you know, kind of funkier you know, trendy seasonal toppings as well. But you can play with the flavor profiles the same way you can a cake, a cookie. I love you know, it. Things like that. Amazing. So, so I yeah. guess we're down to about two minutes already. Oh Time, I think, flies you know, when we, when when we get in the basement. <laughs> yeah, when we get in the basement. So let's exactly. quickly give a shout out yeah. to uh, what flavors you brought here oh, today. What have we brought? And then we'll um, quickly pair a beer, which I think okay. I know which one will be a safe one to go for all okay. of them. but. Let's well, have a look. You have some beautiful ones. You have, uh, I think we did like a cherry blossom, right? Yeah. It's, it's a chocolate cherry, correct? Yes, that's correct. Yeah. So anytime you have chocolate, chocolate complements really well. You know, you already have the cherry notes probably in the beer, which I can already taste it and smell it. Like there's something <laughs> about chocolate and cherries, which <laughs> it, that'd be romantic for a beautiful Valentine yeah. pairing, right? Absolutely, so absolutely. You wouldn't want to compete with the cherry. You may just even want to do something as simple as complement it with just another double chocolate cupcake so that you're, you get to actually taste those cherry notes. Sometimes you want to complement. Sometimes you want the beer to be more emphasized, right? Yeah, yeah. So then we also did, I brought, um, if you want to stick in kind of the chocolate family, I did bring a chocolate peanut butter. So, you know, again, to just kind of throw another little flavor into the mix with the chocolate and the cherry. Mm -hmm. Everybody loves peanuts. Um, and then I did, I brought a Nanaimo, which <sighs> Nanaimos are, they're very textural. They have coconut in them. They have almonds. They have graham crumbs. So you're really yeah. building on that flavor profile. Okay. Which is really nice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send this to commercial and we're going to extend this a little oh. bit. <laughs> Okay. Because I think we've got a bit more to talk about, to and I say. really want to get, no, I do as well, and I really want to get a beer. Yeah. So we're going to head to this break, and then we'll be right back to taste some beers. Think it's okay to drive high? Think again. Drug impaired driving is as illegal as drunk driving, and in Ontario, the penalties are the same. If police suspect you're driving under the influence of drugs of any kind, or a combination of drugs and alcohol, and you fail a roadside test, your license will be suspended immediately for up to 30 days. You'll pay a penalty of $198. And you can be charged with a criminal offense of impaired driving the same as alcohol. Driving high is never okay. With NHL Center Ice, you get a premium ticket to the games you want every night of the season. With up to 37 out-of-market games a week to choose from, you'll get more goals, more saves, more non-stop action from the teams you love. NHL Center Ice, part of the Rogers Super Sports Pack. All this for only $35.95 a month. Order through your remote on Channel 431 or call 1-888-ROGERS-1 today. Safety tips with John Percy. One of the questions that we get asked when it comes to working smoke alarms in the home is what do I do if I can't hear the smoke alarm go off? In Ontario, it is required that you have a working smoke alarm in every level of your home outside the sleeping areas. So the kit that I have here has been very kindly donated by the Canadian Hearing Society down in Kitchener. And this is for people who may have hearing impairments. So what happens is when this smoke alarm goes off, twofold, it actually sets off this radio. It will give you a verbal command. A light will go off. But what's really important as an important feature is when I set off this smoke alarm, this is a vibrating pad that will go underneath your pillow on your bed. So you probably won't hear the smoke alarm. You may or may not see the light on the radio, but what should get your attention if there is a true fire is this vibrating pad that should wake you up if you're sleeping in the middle of the night.
All right, so welcome back to the ongoing history of beer. Um, I'm your host again, Tiffany, and I've got Stacey Bester here today from Sweet Bakery. I don't know Sweet if Bakery. I announced that first round. And we are talking cupcakes, fall flavors, oh, yeah. and beer. And I'm, I'm kind of turning yeah. you into a bit of a beer drinker. You are, well, the funny thing is I would say I would I w probably would never just go and order a beer, you know, to accompany a meal or just like on a patio, right? Yeah. But I love pairing them and I think it's because I am a foodie to me it it's more of a pairing than right. like just a regular beverage for me, you know. So, uh, but yeah, I can I totally dig the craft beers. Like you'll never find me just having a Labatt 50. Or, well, I don't think you'll find anybody having a no. Labatt 50. <laughs> hey, that's my guilty pleasure. That's my guilty pleasure, but well, that's okay. We got an old case we can in cut the garage. That. <laughs> yeah. It's too funny. But, yeah, you have because I really didn't enjoy or experience beers until we started doing these pairings and. You've just okay. you've turned me into a, a beer snob, uh, and I love it. I dig a sour <laughs> beer. I just really, really love a sour uh, beer. Yeah, it's fantastic, and I think we so. do have. Um, a lot of people that have come out to our pairings in the past that, that don't drink much beer and they yeah. leave actually discovering a new beer and something yeah. that they love. And again, more and more pairing the flavors and kind of bringing out a little bit, um, yeah. something better from each side of it. Oh, is, yeah. It's really good. Yeah, no, for sure. All right, so I think we ended on Nanaimo, but we've yeah. got a couple other ones left well, in there. And I think I'm going to pour, actually, I'm going to wait to decide. I'm going to yeah. wait to decide. Okay. Well, you brought a couple other beers too. Did we want to talk about kind of these? ones that you set to the side like your yeah. non-alcoholic ginger beer which of course you know if you like the flavor of beer but you don't you know you're the designated driver mm -hmm. or for whatever reason um, you know or even if that was an alcoholic beer that ginger I was quite excited about that because um, you know it's perfect for this time of year yeah. because all of our pumpkin spices and that have ginger in it so I did I brought a pumpkin spice uh, or actually a pumpkin spice maple cupcake Ooh. which is the center right. and then I brought just a nice classic vanilla as well depending on you know whether you really want to elevate the ginger and really taste the ginger or if you want to complement it, right? To me, it's gonna complement more with the pumpkin. Yeah. You know, and then I did bring a carrot one, which is again, carrots all year round, but it has oh, pineapple in it, it has cinnamon in it. Um, so it would go beautifully with the ginger. Um, and then you know, also this IPA, I think that was one of my favorites yes. that we did once was uh, that earthy carrot to kind of a, a little bit more of a, a multi backbone, not IPA, yeah. but this one still has the tropical notes and of that would pineapple be really in there. Really nice with the carrot cake yeah so and everybody is different you know what they taste like I know I we go to scotch right. tastings right I don't if you've ever ah, heard I know so if, good. if you've ever heard anybody describe scotch like the one time they were like described it like fresh laid asphalt it's like I don't know who's ah. licking asphalt but we all have a different palate and what notes we we choose to enjoy so right and, so. and I mean that's the aroma too how aroma can be a taste of something yeah. right so you think oh that that taste reminds me of the smell of something yeah that brings it out. yeah I know it's crazy and then it brings so. you back to your memories I oh had, I um, remember the roads being yeah. fresh asphalt when we lived in a new subdivision as a kid so it's funny I didn't want to lick the road or drink it but <laughs> You know, Nothing maybe like picked up a piece of gum of off the ball. road. I don't know, but I'll get that. That's funny. That's funny. But, uh, All right. Well, I wasn't sure if I had. Yeah, that's going to be a ball opener. So we're not going to open that <laughs> one today because I'm not going to do my uh, party trick with my teeth on there. But what do you, what do you, you think? What do you want to? Uh, yeah, enough beers yet. We'll get through these. <laughs> oh gosh, let's try the cherry blossom. I'm okay. dying to try that one. That yeah. one's going to be. So this one's from Mill Street out of Toronto. Um, yeah, I know oh. some people might argue a little bit about it uh, being bought out, but they're still making some nice beers. And when you go visit them in the distillery district as well, cool. it's um, a beautiful place, especially at Christmas coming yeah. up to visit. And they do have some nice beers on site that you can't always get. But this one was purchased in the LCBO. Yeah. Oh, there you go, you. my dear. We're going there for our anniversary weekend. Oh, We're wonderful. going to the distillery district. Oh, it's yeah. so gorgeous. It's so gorgeous. Oh, it's so chocolatey. It's like it you've is. just poured me a glass of chocolate milk. <laughs> it really is. There's not much roast um, off the nose on that. Wow. And that's what I like about these cups, too. I know they're sort of silly, but these stemless cups are just perfect to drink beer because you can kind of give it that swirl and yeah, get a little bit yeah, more yeah. into there. A little bit more roast on wow. the taste. 
and maybe some of the cherry like uh, it's subtle. tang is that what I would say yes. a little bit yeah it's hmm. a it's a tart well it's a tart cherry it's mm. definitely a tart cherry you know it depends on, we all think of cherry I think quite often like that cherry pie filling that our mother probably used yes, right whereas yes. when I think of a cherry I think of like a nice Bing cherry you know so this has more of that tart flavor than that sweet cherry cheesecake right right kind so of it's kind of going nice with that sweetness and Very taking away nice. from from what's on the nose yeah I do love I love this conversation we have and again being a little bit of one and for those who know I'm diabetic so I don't eat a ton of sweets yeah. but I still love them so I think it's really neat that we can kind of geek out over yeah. both of this stuff and still understand yeah. um, each other's language oh well. for sure so cheers to, that. cheers to that and should we which one do you think would go best with this uh, you know what because the cherry isn't overpowering in this I would myself probably just want to go with the double chocolate okay so do you want to help I'll give that to you. <laughs> let, have you had enough cupcakes? I had so, you're... so many cupcakes. I'm oh, going to turn into a cupcake. I'm still going to have. But I'm going to enjoy the beer. See, this is we get to trade off. I don't get to drink beer at work because you know mm. it's frowned upon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a very so interesting industry. That's really nice. And I don't. Oh, well, it's beautiful. I'm not usually like a stout drinker mm -hmm. you know because it's heavy yeah i like l usually a lighter beer if i'm going to sip away at it but this is like a beautiful pair because it's so creamy it is the texture and with that i almost it brings out a little bit more chocolate yeah and that tartness is still there on the finish but not as much at the start yeah and it goes very very nice together yeah probably like if you were bringing this one to the shop to do our pairing mm -hmm. i would probably put a little bit of espresso in the coffee not so much to make it a mocha but coffee brings out the flavor of the chocolate it enhances it, it coffee right. is kind of like adding salt and pepper when you're cooking you know I love it. so i think that would be really nice it would just really enhance the chocolate Perfect. flavor yeah. well, on that note we're yeah. about to wrap up so thanks again for joining you're welcome and keep an eye out on uh, i guess the facebook page and we will be yeah. doing another cupcake and beer we're gonna pairing. do two in november two. yeah and so. uh, come out and you get to try all of this live. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so thanks again for joining on uh, the ongoing history of beer. Make sure to tune in when the show is on and do yourself a favor and go discover a new beer this week that you enjoy. Cheers. <laughs>I'm Dave Carroll, host of Brant Life. Join me every Monday and Thursday at 6 p.m. for a brand new show featuring you and your stories and the things you care about right here on Brant Life on Rogers TV.